welcome to Seen Through Glass and welcome to Orange County, California. As you've probably realized, today is a relatively special day. It is a special meeting of paint to sample Porsches, PTS. Something that's become very in vogue over the last, I don't know, year or 18 months or so. And now, cars like GT3 Tourings, GT3 RSs, GT4s, etc., becoming sort of more valuable based on the colour that they have been painted. So, this is a collection of PTS cars, and today we're going to go on a bit of a drive, visit some different coffee shops, lunch spots, etc. Now, okay, I'm not officially in a PTS car because I think, as we all know, firstly, my Carrera T has had topaz skin, but also it's painted in a tweaked version of a Rolls Royce colour, which we're now calling Nullarbor Green. But I've been, I've been given honorary status today so that I can join in with the activities. Anyway, there are some incredible cars knocking around. First things first, it was a 6am start, so I've got to get some coffee and then I'll start talking you through some of the cars that are here today. Right, we've got to st we've got to start at the beginning. Yeah. I'm assuming mint green. Correct. Yeah, that's mint. <laughs> do you? I, mint I'll let fresh. you do the German names if you want as well. If you, uh, I, no, I, I, okay. I, I would butcher them. Yeah. Don't know how them anyway. Toothpaste, Colgate mint green. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this one's Viper green. Viper green. A okay. Uh, this is olive. Oh, and these two olives, they're both the same. Uh, they are. Nullable green. Nullable green. Honorary of member. Course. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then a pair of Brewster green. A pair of Brewsters, which is crazy because half an hour ago when the clouds were out these were black it's cars almost black. literally yes. almost black yeah, yeah, yeah. and now the the colors really starting to pop oak green metallic the now i think famous oak green metallic thanks yeah. to our friend of course uh, mr oak green metallic yes. himself there's the olive the other olive car um this is this is now called light green uh but for a while it was called birch green okay that is super fluorescent it's not showing up on camera this looks completely white on camera but this, this is one, kind of like an off-white isn't this it? is like light a, ivory light ivory yeah. potentially my favorite controversial i think always officially it is ruby star are these two matching no no this is no. aubergine this is eggplant and this is amethyst oh okay which again the sun I mean, it's just crazy how much these colors change in the sun, which is really, that's paint selling point, isn't it? That, yeah, that it can transform so much depending on what light you're throwing. And in these it. two are also very similar depending on lighting conditions. This is Viola. Viola, okay. Yeah, you can start to really see those hues now. A little bit more violet. Uh, this is paint to sample. Okay. Uh, this is a an optional Panamera color called <laughs> carbon gray metallic. Oh my God, I love Not it. to be confused with carbon steel gray metallic. Okay, sure. Uh, this one is, uh, Dark sea blue. I thought you were going to stumble for a second, but I, I should have had confidence. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's either dark sea blue or deep sea blue. Okay, one or the other. It's a sea blue. This is golf. Golf. Blue. Okay. Not golf. G golf. Golf. Okay. As in the German word for golf. <laughs> like golf, uh, the oil company based out of the Gulf of Mexico. Sure. Golf, the German word for golf, taking inspiration from the Gulf of Mexico. Not confusing at all. No, not confusing at all. Amazing. <laughs> no. Uh, and then pastel orange, uh, and then signal yellow. Absolutely beautiful. The most obnoxious color. No, signal know. yellow. I, I'm such a fan of. Like honestly, of, of all the other sort of yeah, Porsche colors. Uh, I'm a fan of yellow in general, but this is just absolutely stunning. I know today is Porsche day, but I am sorry. Look at this DBS. This is unreal. We've got a dark British racing green. It hasn't got the tan interior. The one next to it does. I have seen a dark green DBS before with the tan interior, but it just doesn't matter. Absolutely incredible. So yes, here we are, Aston Martin, Newport Beach. A ton of cars looking out. Really nice color on that DB11 down there as well. Actually, oh, and there's an AMR Rapide. Oh, I'm obsessed with these things. I really want to have a go, and I actually begged Aston Martin in the UK to give me one for a day, but they didn't have any available. I just think this thing is so beastly. Sorry, I'm getting in the way of you there. Um, and yeah, absolute <coughs> behemoth. Oh, I'm choking with excitement, but yeah. Anyway, 
The guys are getting all parked up. We're gonna have a walk around, see what else is lurking here down at Aston Martin. Out of nowhere, we have got a Huayra Roadster. How absolutely casual. This is what I love about Newport Beach, about the OC, is suddenly cars like this just show up. Once again, after falling in love with about 15 Aston Martins and then that Pagani, uh, we are on the move to lunch. It is lunchtime, and apparently we're going to the Ritz Carlton. Mm, very fancy. I do worry that I'm not really going to be able to afford to eat anything at the Ritz Carlton, but uh, apparently it's a very scenic spot. And Amma, the guy who gave us the uh, the tour of all the PTS cars earlier and arranged this whole morning, said there's a bit of a surprise lurking there for me. So I'm not really sure what that's going to be, but. I'm obviously super hyped. So yes, got about a 25 minute drive to the Ritz Carlton. It's only a P1, it's only a P1. <laughs> I've just pulled the most illegal maneuver. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, I haven't got a microphone on. I'm trying to do Vicky's window up because it's blasting air. But I saw this P1 pulling out of a junction and I've just literally pulled a legal maneuver. Look at that, full carbon. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> Unreal, I'm going in completely the wrong direction from lunch, but I just don't think it matters for two seconds. I will be late for lunch because this thing is <gasps> so weird, Jesus. You just don't see P1s on the road, but there is one. Oh my God, it's full exposed carbon. That's so nuts. <laughs> Oh, I just love California. Right, time for me to go and get some lunch. Lunch was delicious, that place had incredible views, but you now find me back in Hollywood because today's taking a rather unexpected turn. Firstly, just another quick shout out for the PTS RS gang, the guys who arranged that amazing Porsche meet this morning. They are absolute legends. If you are interested in seeing awesomely colored 911s, make sure to check them out on Instagram. But yes, I'm back here in Hollywood because I've been offered the opportunity to drive a 348 Ferrari for a few hours. And if you watched my video with Magnus Walker the other day, you'll know that I'm kind of intrigued by the idea of a 348. I've never driven one, but they remain the most affordable Ferrari you can find on the used car market. And that, to me, might be an opportunity. So yes, I'm about to go and firstly get changed into not only some hot weather gear, but also more Ferrari appropriate clothing, then go and pick up a 348, and then go and find Alejandro Salamondrin. And I'm gonna explain why shortly, but there, there is reasoning behind it. Anyway, so yes, here we go. Let's go and find me a Ferrari. greatest Ferrari ever made. I have to say a huge thanks to Churo for arranging this car. If you're coming to LA and you want to spend time in an old Ferrari, I'll put a link to the Churo listing below. You can check out how much it costs and uh, its availability, etc. I feel like this year people keep forgetting that I am, at heart, a Ferrari obsessive. People think I'm now all about Porsche, but it's not right. Cut me and I still bleed Maranello. But even I will admit, like I just did, that, yeah, 348, it's a, a tad dodgy. Uh, it was made back in the early 90s when Ferrari weren't making that many amazing road cars except the F40. They weren't making that many exceptional race cars. Formula One was a bit of a disaster for them back then. So it's just a bit of a dark period in the old prancing horses history. And 
348 just remained a bit of an undesirable car. In fact, nowadays, if you go on the Ferrari used market, then these are some of the most affordable cars you can buy. However, despite all that, despite the fact it's got a dog leg gearbox that I'm still struggling to get used to, I still kind of like it. I don't love it, but I like it. There's, there's something inside of me that whenever I'm near a car with a prancing horse on the steering wheel, my heart races a little bit faster. I just get a little bit more excited. And I have to say, these LA Canyons take my breath away every time. So being in a spider right now is just perfect. Yeah, it's an emotional connection I have with these cars that just makes me smile so freaking much. And I was trying to explain that connection to Salamondrin last time I was here in LA, but he just, he didn't get it. And at the time, I'll go as far to say is that he really hated Ferrari. But since, since I last saw him about 12 months ago, he's changed his tune and apparently now he's one of the world's biggest Ferrari fans. I'm a little bit sceptical of that. I feel like maybe he's just trying to get a pista or a slot on the next LaFerrari. So today, I'm going to take this 348 to find Alejandro Salamondrin and kind of test him on his supposed new love of the prancing horse. Good to see you, man. Good to see I you. Thought, I mean, now that you're proclaimed Ferrari obsessive, I thought I'd bring you one of the best. Like, is this like a call-out video? Yeah. <laughs> is it? This is terrible because I don't even know what this is. This is, this is a, a 348. No, 348. It's What's the pre, difference? Pre 355. This is the last car that Enzo Ferrari had a hand Handle. in developing. <gasps> this is falling apart. Yeah, it really it, is. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's got like that cool Magnum PI type of thing going on for itself, but it's fought, like. Yeah, no, no, don't point out anything. Yeah, it's, but hey, it's character. No, that just means it's been well used, which is rare for a Ferrari. So it's actually, like welded here. Yeah, <laughs> okay, stop, pointing, that? stop okay. pointing holes. <laughs> I feel like to be a proper Fer Ferrari yeaster, I'm yeah. going to use that phrase. Let's go with it. You have to be able to love cars like this. This is really, is it pointing to the center? Yes, yeah, so now this is something, you, uh, how much time have you spent in older cars? None. None. Okay, so this is a 93 or 94, I think. Okay. And a lot of these old Italian cars, you sit at an angle. So everything goes into the middle. The you're ribbon the passenger seat or like the, that. Yeah. So my throttle pedal is kind of at 2.30 p.m. in terms of my body weight. I can see it yeah, from here. Okay, I'm not going to let go of the brake, but you can, you can see. So everything's over there. And then, <laughs> and then look at my knees. <laughs> my knees are banging on the steering wheel. Hey, but it's, this is the... Hey, you know... A lot of people were asking me because they they saw my McLaren when it caught on fire, right? And they go, I can't believe these new cars have those problems. Like you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar car. I'm like, they were way worse yeah. back in the day, <laughs> way worse. But no one cared. No one cared. It and was no like, one ha, talked ha, about. It was like, ha, ha, yeah, my, my Ferrari's on fire. But they, <laughs> but they were right. Like yeah. they were tremendous. Oh, this might go shit. up in flames at any second. Like, oh I know you have a traumatic thank you, experience thank there, you, but thank this, you. oh, look, even, <laughs> even the keys falling apart. <laughs> Well, Sorry, <laughs> we didn't need it. Um, right, could you put your seatbelt on, please? Is that it? Nope. Firstly, pull that side up. Oh! And that goes in here. No! And now, over the shoulder, there should be a little clip just behind where you pulled that, that belt out of. There it is, right? Yeah, you got it? Hey, it's actually kind of genius. <laughs> What's the other one for? Well, no, no one knows. There's one that comes that comes out of here by the, the door on my side, not on your side. But you know what's really bad? Like when I arrived here originally, I go and I take off this one like in a normal car. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, and you forget that you've got another one on. And then, yeah. <laughs> now let's keep our fingers crossed that it starts because another thing which you have to be prepared for with an older Italian car is it might not always start. Um, so I was going to say you can't be serious, but you can. I no, actually no, know you this. can't. <laughs> That was pretty good. That was, that's the smoothest it's been all day. <laughs> you that got was a really good. A good luck charm. Well, 
this is awkward. Uh, hello from my Airbnb in Monterey. I I've had a bit of a fail uh, whilst reviewing the footage with Alejandro in the 34A. It seems I've had some kind of GoPro audio disaster and basically all the footage from us in the car is unusable. So I've been trying to rescue it, I've been trying to salvage it the last couple of days, I've been going over it over and over again, speaking to various different experts in terms of this kind of thing, and unfortunately the footage is just, yeah, it, it's gone. So I'm talking to you now to try and explain things and also wrap things up because my outro was filmed in the 348. Uh, I will say that I think I'm going to allow Alejandro the title of Ferrari fanboy. He proved to me in a few different ways that he is now quite a legitimate Ferrari fan. Maybe not as knowledgeable as a geek as I am, uh, but that's totally allowed and understandable. He is definitely into the brand. My personal thoughts on the 348, okay, a little bit of a disappointment. I thought maybe that was going to be like an ideal project car for myself in the future months or years, but I'm not sure there's a lot you can do to save that car. I'm not going to totally write it off. I still would love to think of one day doing a sort of outlaw 348 Magnus Walker style, but for Ferrari. Um, but I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it was, mm. but as I say, for a thing to go and drive and to have fun and to blast around in LA, it was an awesome opportunity. So, as I say, if you're intrigued to check one out, check out Churo. They obviously have a ton of other cars, a ton of other Ferraris listed on there as well. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So, yeah, apologies for this really weird and abrupt and, and awkward ending. But it's been a, a video of mixed manufacturers. We started off with heavy Porsche stuff and finished up with the Prancing Horse. And now, as I say, in my Airbnb in Montre, I'm here because it is now... Car week, yes, one of my, if not my favorite week of the entire year, so you can be sure. Plenty of videos to come and I'll be making sure that my GoPro is capturing audio correctly. So give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.